We are now going to study a more complex system called the second order system. Uh, the, probably the kind of the canonical example of this is, is, the, is a violent string. And so in a violent string, what we have is, uh, let's say that uh, this is the uh, violin over here. And we're looking at the string across this. This looks more like a guitar, but anyway, the same thing is going to be true for guitars as well. So let's call it a guitar string. And what happens is that when we pluck the guitar, we're going to move the string over like so. And if you look at the string position, it sort of goes like this when it gets plucked. And then uh, I think I should probably turn that off over here. And then what happens is when you release it, it goes back and then it goes to the other side. So it over overshoots it. And then it goes back over here and overshoots that. And then if you look at the uh, one a dot like this uh, on the string over time, uh, the dot will look actually like uh, something like that, a decaying sinusoid. So uh, that is typically what's going on. As you pull the string over, you're putting energy into the system. And then after that, the energy is getting released. And uh, that's what you see over here. Uh, so there's energy being put into the system and then it gets dissipated over time. All right, so that's so much for the intuition. Let's look at the mathematical modeling of this. So for this, the transfer function of a second order system is going by GS equals K over S square over omega square plus two uh, DS over omega plus one. Now in the book, I instead of D, I use uh, zeta, except I find zeta hard to write, it looks I don't know, it's complicated. So I'm just going to use D. Uh, and as before, K is the scaling factor. D is the dampening. That's why I call it D. Dampening ratio, or sorry, damping ratio. I should be careful. D is the damping ratio. And Omega is the uh, na natural frequency. And we'll pick all these terms will become clear very soon. Natural frequency. OK, so uh, the transfer function to understand this, let's again take the unit input us equals 1 over s, which corresponds to u of t equals the unit step function. So it's zero here and then goes to one. So let's give this particular input, uh, we're going to give it a sort of a constant energy of value one. And in that case, we're going to get ys is going to be just us multiplied by this. So it becomes k over s times s square over omega square plus two ds over omega plus one. And the first case we're going to study is when uh, the system is has no damping. So damping d equals zero. So if d equals zero, then this term goes away. This term over here in the middle goes away. And so ys becomes just uh, k over s times s square plus s square of omega square plus one, and we can write this as k omega square over s times s square plus omega square, whoops, s square plus omega square. And this is going to be using partial fraction expansion, k times one over s minus s over s square plus omega square. Now, if you look at this, uh, this actually is not that complicated to come back to the time domain because this is going to evaluate to one and this evaluates in the time domain to cos omega t. And so the function yt is just going to be y of t when you invert is going to be uh, k times one minus cos omega t. And uh, well, this is uh, drawn over here. So remember that the cos omega t is, is actually one at zero. So one minus cos omega t is going to be zero instead of one. So 
that's what we have over here at zero. And then at uh, pi cos goes to one, so, so cos goes to zero, so this one minus cos omega goes to one. And what we have really is one minus cos omega t is a scaled value, so this is going to be k. And it is having the same frequency, it has the frequency omega, so that's why it's the natural frequency. That's the frequency at which it is oscillating when there is no damping. And we see that uh, it's uh, it's a sinusoid. It's just uh, so what we can make out then is if you have an undamped system like this, uh, a second order system like this, which is undamped, then it's just going to uh, oscillate at its natural frequency. And you can think of this as being the guitar which has, uh, whose oscillations are like this. They never actually die away, it just oscillates at the at its natural frequency forever once you pluck it. So it's a it has no friction, so to speak. It just keeps oscillating forever. Uh, of course, it's not going to happen in practice, but anyway, that's what it looks like. Okay, let's now look at what happens when we are going to have some damping. And so case two, is when we have what's called an underdamped system. And in the underdamped system, we haven't damped it enough. I'll explain what that means in a minute, but we're going to just say that zero is less than D is less than one. So earlier D was zero, we're going to now set zero is less than D less than one. And so in this case, YS is going to be given by, so this is the output for the unit step input is given by uh, K over uh, this is as before, so I haven't really changed anything. S over S square over omega square plus 2DS over omega plus 1. And so we can read at this as K omega square over S times S square plus 2DS plus omega square. I'm just rewriting the terms over here. And then we can write this as uh, a little bit more complicated explanation, k times 1 over s minus s plus d omega over s plus d omega square plus, there's going to be a different omega over here, so I'm just going to call it omega prime square minus d omega over s plus d omega square plus omega prime square. So I've introduced this new term, omega prime. So omega prime uh, is given by omega prime square is equal to omega square times one minus d square. So it's just a convenience to write omega prime in this way. And uh, okay, so uh, this is a notational convenience. Now what we can do is we can now invert this and we invert this to say that y of t is going to be k times, well, the first term, the inversion of that is going to be one, so that just is this one. And then the, to invert this value over here, uh, it turns out that using the table, we can show that this is given by one minus e to the minus uh, d omega t cos omega t plus d over square root 1 minus d square sine uh, omega t. Sorry, sine omega, omega prime t sine omega prime t. Okay, so, um, and uh, this can be further written as k times, so, okay, so, uh, sorry, this over here. Um, we can pull out this d over 1 minus d squared to the outside, so this becomes k times 1 minus e to the minus d omega t times, uh, over square root one minus d square into square root one minus d square cos omega prime t plus d sine omega prime t 
Now, when you notice something like this one is d squared, so it's a natural substitution for us to think of that as being uh, a cosine value. So let's say let uh, d equals cos theta. So remember d is in the range zero to one. So it can, it, is, it can be thought of as being a value between zero and one. But let's say let d equals cos theta. Uh, and so theta equals cos inverse inverse of d. And then this implies square root of one minus d squared is just going to become sine theta, where theta is this new helper variable. And so then you can rewrite this one over here as k times one minus e to the minus d omega t over square root one minus d square. And then over here, this is going to be sine theta cos w prime t plus cos theta sine w prime t. And this over here is uh, essentially sine, something of the form sine a cos b, cos a sine b, which is the same as sine of a plus b, which is sine of theta plus omega prime t. And uh, we can exp uh, expand theta again as, uh, so, uh, since uh, theta is given by one, one minus d squared, so this is, uh, uh, we can, uh, sorry, theta is cos inverse d, so it's sine of cos inverse d plus omega prime t. Uh, over here, and so the final equation becomes, and let me just move this out of the way, Oops. Oops. Uh, the wrong. Okay. There we go. Move that out of the way here, and so we can rewrite this equation finally as uh, or this whole thing as equal to uh, y t equals k times one minus e to the minus d omega t over square root one minus d square sine of, there's the sum. So it'll be uh, omega prime t plus cos inverse, cos inverse d. Okay, so it looks a bit complicated, but let's try and kind of figure out piece by piece what's going on. So k is just as gain, so that's just, that's not a big deal. It just multiplies everything by the gain value. Uh, this part over here is sort of the DC value, it's just a constant. And now this is a sinusoid. It's a sinusoid which has a, a frequency of omega t. So this one over here is independent of time. So it has no time component, no dependence on time, dependence on t. So this is the only one. So it's oscillating with the frequency omega prime. And omega prime, we remember over here is uh, omega prime is defined like this. So omega prime is, uh, it turns out to be related to the natural frequency. And uh, the uh, this is going to be offset by cos inverse d. So that's the phase angle. And then this one is an exponentially decreasing value of time because this down here is independent of t. And so it's essentially e to the minus something t. And uh, so it's e to the minus d omega t. And so this value over here is going to be a uh, declining function of time. It's just something like that. It's an exponential going on the time. So what are we saying over here? We have a sinusoid and you're going to multiply that with the exponentially declining function of time. So if this value were one, we'd get a full sinusoid. And if this value declines, you take the product of these two what we get is a sinusoid that decays with time. But that's exactly what we wanted. Remember when you pluck a guitar string, that's what's gonna happen. I drew the first value over here. If you look at this value here, it's a declining function of sinusoid declining with time. And in fact, we get that through this math over here to make a declining function of time. And so this figure over here kind of captures this for different values of the uh, of value d. So over here, let's start with d equals 0.2, which means it's not very, really, it's not damped. So the string oscillates, goes up, and then it declines sinusoidally with time. And as we make d larger and larger, the oscillations become 
more and more damped. They go, it's like putting your hand on top of the string as you pluck it, so it gets damped more and more. And when uh, d equals one, it is going to be actually not oscillating at all. It's this dashed line over here, which just hits that over here. So that's the value in d equals one. And so we can think of this as being, when, you, when you're giving it a shock at time zero with this unit uh, function, you're giving it, what happens is that the system responds depending on the uh, amount of dampening, it, the steady state response is to scale the input by value k, that's the steady state response over here. And the transient response is this one over here. It's going to oscillate for a bit and then it's going to become, uh, it's going to uh, settle down and the, and the transient response essentially decays to zero. When d equals one, we will call this critically damped, in which case when it's, when it, then, the, uh, then we essentially have uh, these oscillations go away. And it actually, it's probably worth uh, uh, looking at that special, that, get, that case separately. So let's just say d equals one, then we get ys equals k omega square over s times s square plus two omega s plus omega square because d goes away. And then we can rewrite this as k times one over s minus omega over s plus omega square minus one over s plus omega. And this in the time domain is given by yt equals k times. So the in, inverse of this is inverse of one over s is one minus, now this is nothing more than e to the minus omega t minus omega t e to the minus omega t. And uh, this has no sinusoidal components because uh, with respect to time, omega is just some number. So this is just the kind of the uh, uh, two different sinusoids and uh, sorry, two different exponentials uh, and uh, and that we, so we are going to see essentially a, a value which is, uh, not, of course, we're multiplying t, but this t by e to the minus t, but this is so much, declines so fast that the multiplication by t doesn't really help you much. It's still going to decline to zero. And so we get this graph over here, this red line, the red uh, graph over here, when, when the case of the, uh, when d equals one. And then the last case is for the over, over damp system when uh, D is greater than one. Um, and we'll come to that in just a moment.